house of God before already have on the divorce papers filled out. But they came to church. Somebody invited them and watch God put that home back together. Watch God put peace in those little children there. Watch God put love in mama's heart to daddy again. Watch God chase away the demons that were living in their home, brother. No wonder hell hates the church. I told me a while back he had a couple in his church that he had been helping for years to stay together. Uh -huh. About once a month, occasionally they'd come over and he would he would have to go through the, the little pep talk again. Yeah. Keep them together. Yeah. <laughs> One day he was out in his yard working in his flower bed and the car pulled up in his driveway and he recognized the car and he saw the man and the man got out and had some papers in his hand. Uh -huh. He walked over and he said, Pastor, I love you. You've been good to me and my family, but I, I got to just tell you, I had all I can take. I've already filed the divorce papers. He said, you did what? He said, I filed the divorce papers. He said, you really did. He said, I really did, Pastor. I've just had it. I've had all I can take. He said, well, I thank you for coming and letting me know first rather than me hearing it through the grapevine. Yeah. I appreciate you respecting me enough to do that. He said, but since you're here, uh -oh. yeah. could we just talk a little bit? Just a little bit. Yeah. He said, well, sure, Pastor. He said, let me see that paper. So the pastor took that paper, and he turned it over, and he pulled his pen out of his pocket. Every preacher and every good salesman normally got a pen in their pocket. Yes, he drew a line across the top and one down the middle. He said, on this side are the good things about that woman, on this side are the bad. Yeah. He said, let me, let me, let me just go down the list. He said, you know, you got to admit, she's a pretty good looking woman. Yeah. And the guy said, well, yeah, yeah, she's not, she's not bad to look at at all. She's pretty easy on the eyes. And then the pastor said, easy on the eyes and wrote that on the positive side. Yeah. He said, and I know because you've invited me over there and we've had church function where she's cooked and brought it in, but I've been blessed to be able to come over and sit down. That woman is a tremendous cook. Yeah. The guy said, oh, yeah, I'm going to miss that. She is a great cook. And the pastor wrote, great cook. Yeah. He said, and if I'm not mistaken, that woman makes more money than you do. Uh-oh. <laughs> she's, she's part of the breadwinner for this family. Yeah. She goes out and earns a payday. Yeah. He said, well, you, you, you're right, Pastor. Yeah, he, didn't, he, he put the, <laughs> half the breadwinner. Yeah. <laughs> he said, and, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, you told me that she takes care of all the bills. Yeah. She keeps the, the checkbook balance and all that kind of stuff. And the guy said, well, you're, you're right. She does. And the pastor wrote down there, bookkeeper. Yeah. And he just kept going down the list and just kept listing all the things. All the things. And Brother Driscoll, he got all the way down that side of that piece of paper. And he finally said, well, we filled that side up with all the good things about that woman. Now, what was it you telling me that you had a bait of? Yeah. <laughs> what were you telling me that was so bad about her anyway? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, Well, Pastor, you know I told you half a dozen times. He said, All I can remember is one thing. Yeah. And the pastor reached up there and wrote it down. Yeah. And he said, Are you telling me you're fool enough to leave a woman that's got a whole page full of positives and one negative? Oh, my. Come on. Yeah. That's good. The guy said, Give me the papers. That's good. Yeah. We'll be there Sunday. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Hey, brother, I've seen situations that were fall, not just falling apart, they had done fell apart. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen them, I, I've seen them just the mama or the daddy one come in the door with the kids. Yeah. And then they come and receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I, I had a man one time, and I went to his house, and he said, I'll never set foot in that church. Uh -huh. I said, I beg to differ with you. Yeah. If you die tomorrow, we're going to drag you in a box in the back door, and I'm going to preach a message right over top of you. Yeah. You will set foot in that church. Yeah. You may not know it. You may not like it, but you will come through the door. Because Mama got the Holy Ghost, and I'm her pastor now. Yeah. Yeah. And when yeah. we yeah. preach your funeral, you're going to be inside that church. Yeah. Come on. I want you to understand this, up, friend. God. I witnessed to a man. I went to his home. I taught him Bible studies. His wife had prayed through already before I got there to the church. But I, I went and I, I met Reuben and I began to talk to him. Reuben had a really bad problem with alcohol. And uh, 
I would go to his home to teach him Bible study. His eyes would be kind of glassy looking. He'd already had two or three little nits before I got there. Uh -oh. And then somebody said, I wouldn't have hung out with him. Brother, I'm going to tell you something now. You better learn. Yeah. When you start winning souls, every once in a while you're going to get your hands a little dirty. Yeah, but you know what? What I got is greater than what they got. All right. What is inside of me is much greater than what's inside of them. There was a leper that came to Jesus one day and said, if you would, you can make me whole. And the Bible said it plainly. He touched him. Yeah. for us for three nights. First night of that revival, we had a lady that flew all the way from California to be in that revival service that night. She flew all the way, paid her way to get to that revival, and the first person who got the Holy Ghost in that revival was that little lady, lady from California. Before Ronnie ever got to preaching, he walked to the pulpit, and the Holy Ghost started moving, tongues of interpretation came forth. That little woman stood up and lifted her hands, and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Brother, when you go out of your way to get to God, God will go out of his way to fulfill your needs, praise God. Ten, uh, ten adults that night filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. That, that, that was a man, the man, one of the guys that was filled with the Holy Ghost that night was a fellow that came up and asked me to come to his house and teach him the Word of God. Standing by the back wall, nobody touching him. I went and looked back there, and he lifted his hands up, and God filled J.A. Rodriguez with the Holy Ghost all by himself against the back wall. He began to speak a language you never learned before, praise God. Bye, bye, bye. But right in the middle of the second night of that revival, I remember looking back and a little short fella come walking in the door and I recognized Reuben Baez and I could recognize by the way he was walking. He's had more than two nips tonight. He came to the house of God just a little bit up and ahead. Matter of fact, he was inebriated beyond good walking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Andy, sometimes I remember one time in New Orleans, Louisiana, preaching revival, walking down the street and I saw a big, long, tall black fella coming. Uh, and he was staggering all over the street. And he'd stop and he'd wall his eyes and look and, and he'd walk a little further. I don't know if he was looking for a stop sign or a red light. I don't know if he thought he was driving an 18-wheeler or, 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 or a Fiat. I don't know what he was doing. But he's walking down that street. And Brother Joe, he, I don't even know how long he'd been getting drunk or how long he'd been drinking to get that drunk. But he's just walking along and he fell over against the building and all of a sudden he began to sing. Amazing grace. <laughs> Shall always be my song of praise. Yes, I stopped yeah. on the sidewalk. Yeah. And he's leaning against the wall, just all drunk. I shall forever. And he can sing that song. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, if he was sober, you couldn't get him to sing that song. Right. But he's lost his inhibitions. Right. He's got enough alcohol in him now that what's even really in his heart's coming out. All right. How, my Lord of heaven, in Jesus' name, right. Right. Reuben come walking through that back door. I've never been able to get him in the house of God before. Yeah. He was sitting crying at his home and the tears running down and I pray with him. But I've never been able to get him in the back door. But Brother Joe, he got just slightly drunk and came to church. Yeah. You think I'm going to kick him out? You think I'm going to tell him you're not alive? Another 10 minutes and gave an altar call. 